<laughs> yes, I spent a little bit of time on Saturday. My husband took the kids and I, so I had a couple hours in the house by myself. And the first thing I did when the kids were all gone and I knew they were gonna be gone for a while was purge some toys. <laughs> pulled things out of the corners because there's just when there's so much stuff it's just clutter it just gets in the way the kids don't even really play with it or even see it anymore when there's when you know the the junk pile just starts the toy pile becomes a junk pile when there's just random bits everywhere and the kids don't really play with the toys as well oh uh, yeah kid bedrooms is its own issue <laughs> <laughs> I used to not let any toys in the bedrooms, but with the layout of our current house and now we have a range of kids, that doesn't really work as well as it used to when they were little. That was a great strategy when there were no toys in the kids' bedrooms. That helped a lot. Now, the girls' room has some of the girl toys that they want to keep separate and the boys have the Legos in their room. Whew. But... <laughs> um. The playroom downstairs is where a majority of our toys are. And so this email that I received, the, um, the lady said that she felt like a super mean mom because she had some toys just totally put away in the storage room closet so that not all of the toys were out all the time, but she felt really bad about it. And so I said, no, do not feel bad about that. That is the only way to stay sane. Yeah, yeah, you know, the layout of your house definitely makes a difference um, in what's gonna work for you for the layout. And the toys just collect so quickly, especially depending on your grandparent or friend situation. You know, I can decide, oh, we only want these toys and these toys, and I'm just gonna add to that collection but I don't decide what all the aunts and uncles and grandparents are getting my kids for Christmas and their birthdays. And so it just keeps adding. And now my kids are doing enough chores where they're earning some of their own money and they spend some of their money on adding toys to their collections. And it's like, ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the different ages and the baby can't put away her own toys. <laughs> so... Yeah, it is some, definitely something to manage and something that you have to stay on top of. It's not one of those once and done things where like, okay, it is now perfectly organized and it shall work beautifully from here on out. <laughs> I wish. It's one of those things that you just have to keep doing again, reassessing. If ever entropy applied to the home, it applies in kid bedrooms and kid toys. Entropy is just the name of the game. You're going to have to keep reassessing, keep going through, keep purging, keep cleaning it up over and over and over and over again. <laughs> it's just the way it is. So rotating toys, though, where you have some put in the storage and only a few out helps so much. Um, we used to do this a lot more than we do now. Um, and I still do it a little bit in a different way just because of the change of our house setup. So we have, you know, the big collections of things, Lincoln Logs, wood blocks, railroad, dollhouse, Duplos, those collections of toys each have their own bucket. And most of the buckets, only one or two of those buckets are out at a time and the others are put away. They're inaccessible and kids can trade. So one has to be totally put away before another one comes out. And for the most part, that works pretty well. You know, we're talking about kids here and a mom who does her best to not be OCD about it. So... <laughs> It works pretty well. There are always still, though, little... So they clean up the toys and they trade the container. And you know what you find the next day. Two pieces from the container that's put away. Or the kids are then picking up the toys. And when they find those two pieces, what do they do? They just chuck it 
into some other bin, whatever bin is closest at hand probably. <laughs> they don't generally care so much about keeping the systems up and keeping the categories nice and tight. <laughs> so every once in a while, like in the summer, we will dump the bins, like just take the bin, overturn it, get all of our bins lined up in a row, and I will just start sorting. And I have them helping, okay, you find all the blocks and put them in. And they always, have, there's a general outcry, like, oh, you just dumped everything out. Like, yes, yes, I did. And we are going to resort everything. That's our that's our job today. And you know, we might do something fun after that or they get a treat or something, but ever like once a year or so, we just need to dump all those bins out and resort. And I know that that time is coming that we will do that, and that helps me take a big deep breath when I see like oh my goodness, there's Lincoln logs in the little matchbox car. <laughs> I know. Um, and sometimes we do it more often, but at least once a year. And it kind of depends on how bad things get or how, hey, Elisa, or how um, the kids have been doing on keeping things up, you know, but at least once a year, sometimes more often, you just have to dump things out and resort. Or sometimes I'll go down and if I just see something, I'll just grab it and put it in the right one. But here's my other tip for when you find those things that are just laying around, you know, things out of their category, or you find those two pieces of Duplos when the Duplos are the bin that's put away, and it's kind of inconvenient for you to add them to the right pile. I have a bucket, you know, a plastic storage container handy, like at the top of a, um, yes, it has to, they have to not be able to access those bins. It has to be a mom has to do this trade off. <laughs> But even so, you know, you find the little two Duplos or whatever, a bin that's like up high on a bookshelf or just around the corner, some kind of handy place with in, with a container that has no lid. The, the other containers always have lids because then they stack better. And that's just one more inconvenience step, right, <laughs> to getting a new one out and to just dump, just makes you think twice before just absolutely dumping it out. I hope anyway, that's the theory. But this one little small bin that's convenient to access and has no lid, that you just put those, yes, a rehome basket, that's perfect. I never, I just called it the random bits basket. <laughs> but rehoming, that is exactly what it's for. You just, okay, I'm gonna deal with this later. It's the, I'm gonna deal with this later bucket. And you just chuck it in there. And if I even see something that's in a container and it's bothering me, it's in the wrong container, I'll just grab it out and put it in that deal with it later bucket. And so then, you know, once every six weeks or so, you know, usually we do it on our break week. I don't dump out all the bins and resort, but I might paw through a few, the ones that have been out the most. And, oh, I know. <laughs> And then pull that one rehoming bucket out and just dump that out and say, okay, all of these things need to be put away. You aren't doing anything else. You aren't getting anything else out until these things are put away. And purging is so important because just the random bits collect so much. So um, I never feel bad about just getting rid of the random bits. You might dedicate its own separate Bin is just the random things. Yeah, that you just, yes, sneak them out. If you have to throw something away, you know, do it after they're in bed and you take it out to the big trash can. <laughs> I had some toys that I'm gonna hand down to my niece. And so I, I sorted them all out, you know, but I didn't take it all the way and put it up somewhere where they wouldn't see it until we are able to get them to their new home. <laughs> so where are they? They are now out being played by, played with by the two-year-old, three-year-old. She hasn't cared about them for, she hasn't played with them for more than six, eight months, and they've been available, open to play with, and she hasn't played with them because she has other favorites. And, um, but she came across them because I purged that. I recollected recollect, them up again, and that's just the way it is, so. Um... 
I don't know yet because I haven't made mine responsible for decluttering their own toys, really. Um, it's something that I, I make that decision. I make that call when they aren't around. <laughs> and, um, you know, for the most part, there's what, there's, there are the things that they normally play with and I keep those. But if they haven't played with it for a while and they aren't going to miss it, then I make sure it leaves and they never miss it and don't really think about it. It's just gone. <laughs> um, Legos, they are not supposed to. Sometimes Legos end up all over the house because it's just the nature of Legos to be strewn anywhere you might step barefoot in the middle of the night. That's just the nature of Legos. And no matter what piece of furniture we move, there's always Legos there, no matter what. But the Legos are supposed to stay in their bedroom. They come down and they show the show, you know, show me the things that you've been making. And but the Legos are supposed to stay in their bedroom. So again, I have a little jar up on the main level too, where anytime I find random bits, I stick them up there. If I sweep the main level and I find Legos in the pile, I call out while I'm sweeping. If you want to save your Legos, you better come get them. Otherwise, I'm just sweeping them up. <laughs> a king size sheet. Okay, so you just lay a sheet out and they have to stay. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great idea. I love that. <laughs> And then the Legos in the pockets in the dryer also. I have a little jar on top of my dryer that the little bits I co that come out of pockets or whatever, those things go into that jar and then, you know, once a week or something, I just dump it out on the table and say, okay, you know, no snack time or no whatever time until all of these things are back in their homes. And so I don't make them responsible for the getting rid of their stuff, but I definitely make them responsible for me saying, okay, all of these things were not in their homes. It's your job to get them into their homes now. Rehoming. I like that. I'm totally going to use that. We also use EHAP at our house, which means everything has a place. And so we're going to put it in their place. So EHAP is kind of our general, all right, time to put things back into their homes. And that does just have to happen every day, especially when you're homeschooling or you have several kids, they're just getting things out. <laughs> yes, EHAP. So I just call out, all right, EHAP. And that's what, that's what we do. We spend about 10, 15 minutes 